Okay, so now that we've seen how to define the Euclidean plane on uh, the set of ordered pairs of real numbers, what we're going to do is generalize this concept. We're going to see how to define uh, Euclidean space on um, Rn, uh, which is n tuples of um, of uh, real numbers. So firstly, start with the set. So we're going to do Euclidean space, Euclidean space of n dimensions of n dimensions. Okay, uh, so um, so the first thing is that we start off with a set, which is Rn, which is the set of, uh, what shall we call it? Oh dear, the set of uh, n tuples of real numbers. So um, x1, x2, all the way up to xn, where all the xi's are elements of the real numbers. Okay, uh, so basically, uh, let x1 vary over all the real numbers for every single x1 you pick, let x2 vary over every single real number, and so on, uh, so that we get a huge number of elements in the set. So take that entire set, uh, so if you imagine for um, R3, this would be x1, x2, x3, uh, where all x1, x2, x3 can vary over all real numbers. Okay, uh, so that's, um, that's the concept of the set that we are going to define the u used to define the metric space which is going to turn it into the euclidean space so this is just a set at the moment if we want to convert it into euclidean space we have to add a metric uh, so uh, the metric function uh, is going to take in um, a uh, n tuple like well actually it's going to take in far more sorry no it's going to take in um it's going to take in an ordered pair where each element represents an n tuple uh, an n tuple so i, I will call it uh, x and y but you have to remember that x now is a whole a whole n tuple so x is equal to x1 x2 all the way up to xn and y similarly is equal to y1 uh, y2 all the way up to yn uh, so each one of those has n coordinates so we define this function to be equal to so if it's euclidean space the metric is going to be uh, the um, what's well, going to be x? Uh, it's going to be y1 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus x2 squared. So uh, subtract each component from one another and square it plus all the way up to uh, yn minus xn uh, all squared. Uh, so turnover. Uh, if we uh, look at the specific example of R3, so in R3 in R3, uh, the distance between x and y is just going to be equal to the square root of um, x1, sorry, y1 we put first, but it doesn't make any difference, uh, y1 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus x2 squared uh, plus y3 minus x3 squared. And of course, this generalization includes the Euclidean plane. So uh, if we just did the case where in R2, uh, this metric would reduce down to the one that we saw in the previous video for the uh, Euclidean plane. So that's how it's a generalization of what we saw in the previous video. And we recognize this from uh, school similarly. Uh, so if you uh, visualize this as uh, the three dimensional space, so um, we have three points, in, well, we have two points rather in here with three coordinates x1, x2, x3. So this is the point x, and we have some other point up here, which is y1, y2, uh, y3. And we know that by Pythagoras' theorem, this just gives us the normal notion of length uh, between those two points, which is why uh, this is called the Euclidean space, because uh, this distance is known as the Euclidean distance between two points. Uh, so it just gives us the normal length or uh, the normal notion of distance between these two points. Uh, however, we've obviously written down a formula which is generalized uh, to any number of dimensions. So dxy is equal to the square root of the summation uh, of i is equal to 1 to n of yi minus xi squared. Uh, so uh, this is generalized uh, for rn, for rn. So you can equip rn with this distant 
did with this distance function. Uh, so let's uh, let's try let's see that it obeys axiom one, two, and three, and we will sh we can see clearly that it's going to obey axiom four uh, for uh, the case where n is equal to three and n is equal to two. It is not it is not trivially obvious that it's going to obey that for higher dimensions because we cannot visualize in higher dimensions and we don't have much intuition for what four dimensional space looks like. Um, but uh, we will, I promise you, we will prove uh, later on that, these for that this formula does obey the triangle inequality. And we will do that without relying on a picture. Um, because obviously we need to, because um, for the higher dimensions we can't rely on the picture anymore. Okay, uh, so let's, uh, let's at least see that this obeys the first three axioms of uh, metric spaces. Uh, so the first axiom is that the distance of x and y needs to be an element of the uh, non-negative real numbers. Okay, uh, so uh, we are adding up a bunch of positive numbers. Uh, we're adding up a bunch of positive numbers because when you square any number, it becomes any real number, it becomes positive. Uh, so we're adding up a bunch of positive numbers, which will give us another positive... Well, it'll, sorry, we're adding up a bunch of non-negative numbers. I keep making that mistake which will give up, uh, give us another non-negative number. And we know, of course, that this square root function is defined as follows, like this. Uh, so if you put in a non-negative number, you're going to get out a non-negative number. So yes, it does map it onto a non-negative number. Excellent. So 2, the distance between x and x is equal to 0, and conversely, if the distance is 0, then the two points are the same. OK, so firstly, let's go forward. If we, add, if we work out the distance between x and x, then we get that it's equal to the square root of the sum, i is equal to 1 to n of xi minus xi squared. Well, this is just equal to 0, so we can replace this with 0, and we're summing up n lots of 0, uh, so we get 0 still. And then when we square root 0, we get 0. So the distance is indeed equal to 0. Similarly, if the distance between x and y is equal to 0, that, that, then that implies that the square root is equal to 0. And the square root is only equal to 0 if you actually put, if the actual thing that you put in was equal to 0, which implies that the summation i is equal to 1 to n of yi minus xi squared is equal to 0. Now, we are summing up a bunch of non-negative things, and they are adding up to zero. That implies that absolutely every single one of them is equal to zero. Uh, now, similarly, uh, the only thing that squares to give zero, so if something squared to give zero, this is the function uh, some real, real numbers squared, it was equal to zero. So that implies that yi minus xi was equal to zero for all i uh, is equal to 1, 2, all the way up to n, uh, which implies implies that yi was equal to xi, which implies that x was equal to y for all components, so x was equal to y. Okay, uh, so that's axiom two. Axiom three is that the distance between x and y is equal to the distance between y and x. So the distance between x and y is equal to the square root of the summation i is equal to 1 to n of uh, yi minus xi squared but this is equal to the square root of the summation i is equal to 1 to n of xi minus yi squared. Uh, because at once you square it, this is just the negative of this. Uh, but when you square a negative number, it's going to go to the positive number. So these two things are going to be equal to exactly the same thing. So this is going to equal the distance between x, well, the distance between y and x. So it does obey the symmetry properties. OK, so the final property we wanted to make sure was the triangle inequality. So the triangle inequality says that if you have a third point z, then the distance between x and y is less than or equal to the distance between x and z, uh, plus the distance between z and y. So all we're going to do is get some intuition for why this is true in R3, and we will later prove that just from the symbolic uh, number, just from the symbolic function, just from knowing uh, this function here, we can prove that it's going to obey the triangle inequality. OK, uh, so uh, the distance between x and y is less than or equal to x, uh, z, plus uh, the distance between z and y. So if you take two points, x and y, uh, in R3, then the distance between x and y is this, is the length of that straight line between x and y. 
if you take another point z either it's on this straight line in which case this uh, will be uh, this will this um, these two will be these two sides of this inequality will actually be equal so equality holds or it's not on the straight line in which case uh, basically again we have the um, we have the whole structure that the um, triangle inequality was named after which is the triangle uh, so the distance between x and y is this bit here and the distance between y and z is here and the distance between x and z is here so again the same argument uh, that the lengths two side lengths of the triangle must always add up to something greater than or equal uh, to the length of the third side basically uh, so here we see in R3 uh, we have good intuition for why the triangle inequality is true for this Euclidean metric so Rn uh, with this Euclidean metric is known as Euclidean space, Euclidean n space, Euclidean n space. I don't know if it would have that dash there. Euclidean n space, uh, and uh, it obviously is. The, well, we believe it's it, it's a very good approximation uh, for the structure of the space that we actually live in. Uh, obviously, the general theory of relativity says that we don't live in a uh, perfectly Euclidean space, uh, but uh, it's certainly a very very good approximation. And Euclid's sort of laws of geometry, you know, that uh, they were the laws on which we um, we um, built temples and whatnot. Uh, so that's basically uh, the concept of a Euclidean end space.